Hey guys, Greg here, Bone Tactical. Today we're gonna to talk about home hardening. We're gonna talk about some things that you can do to strengthen your place of residence against threats. Now we're gonna to talk today about threats of violence, threats from humans, threats of things of that nature. And I've got a cool story about the location that I'm at I'll share with you guys here in a second. But we're also gonna to talk today about being realistic and we're gonna talk about the threat of natural disaster, how the threat of natural disaster is just as big of a threat as you being robbed or you being attacked or anything like that. For most of you watching this, actually for the majority of the people watching this, the threat of a natural disaster is, is probably bigger. A fire, a tornado, hurricane, something along those lines. So we're gonna talk a little bit about home hardening and how to protect your home and the mindset of preparedness as it pertains to your place of residence because that's kind of what we're all about here at Bone Tactical. But to talk a little bit about where I'm at, this is a property here in Honduras that we were able to acquire because this area, this farm, it was originally a coffee farm, got so dangerous for the locals that were living here, the family that owned this massive thousand acre farm that we were able to basically acquire it at a very low price because this area is so dangerous. What we've got going on here is kind of a Hatfield and McCoy type family feud and the large majority of the members of the former family that lived here were completely wiped out. So I'm gonna use this opportunity to talk about an area and how to harden this area, how to harden your home, what they could have done differently to win the war that they lost and would have prevented us from being able to come in here and, and, uh, and start managing this property in a better in a better and and, and safer way so now we're, we're just getting in here we're starting to plant some fields and we're, we're gonna really do some home hardening out here and i'm gonna talk to you guys and share with you guys about those things that you can do this area is very dangerous for the stealing of of high value items you guys know that i've been very involved with the cardamom trade here recently and you can possibly you saw early on in this video in the hills behind me we're starting to cultivate some cardamom there but a uh, big cardamom war took off here. And then, like I said, a big Hatfield and McCoy type war. Just these people that live out here in the mountains with no no real type of law, they are their own law. This is a real Wild West scenario. So here, the threat, and this is what I'm talking about, being aware of your surroundings and being realistic. You have to be realistic, first of all. What is your threat? Okay, what is your threat at your home? And what? how are you trying to protect your home? What do you need to protect your home against? In this case, the real threat was armed invasions of, of, of warring neighboring families. So we need to fortify this area against people. But your major threat may be just having a fire, an electrical fire, or it may be a hurricane if you live in South Florida. So those are all things that you need to consider. And that's kind of the most important point on this list. Before we get right into exactly what you need to do to your home, the first thing you need to do is make a realistic list about what is your threat. Do you live in a dangerous neighborhood? Are there robberies? Check the, scr the crime statistics. Are you a single woman? Is it possible that somebody might be lying in wait for you in your home because that you live in an apartment complex and that person or other people or whoever sees that you're a single woman going and coming, they know your schedule, they know your hour that you leave, they know your hour that you work, they know your off time. So it's very important that you do your own threat assessment. Okay, do you have armed guards with you? Do you not? Okay, most likely not. So these are all different things. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what we do, but I'm more gonna tell you about what you can do for your home. So let's get right into it. All right, guys, so now we're gonna talk a little bit about the actual house itself and home hardening, specifically what you can do to harden your home. I'm gonna give you a little bit of principles. I'll give you a little bit of a walk around of the actual things you can do. First off, I'm gonna talk specifically about layout, design, and construction, okay? These are very important topics. If you haven't already built your home yet, then it's really important that you think about this. Homes built in the United States are a lot of time built out of sticks and drywall and they're just extremely weak. It's not, it's not great. You can see where we're at down here in uh, Central America, we've got really hard concrete buildings and it's, they stop bullets, a lot of caliber bullets, nine millimeter is gonna create a hole, but it's not gonna pass with enough energy. If it's a brick wall, it's, it, nine millimeter is not even gonna pass through there. So we're, we're looking at a huge difference in these cases of construction. One thing I do wanna mention is you want an open space, okay? You want layers of barrier of entry 
and you want an open space around your house, what we like to call a killing field. If you need to be able to defend your house, you need to be able to shoot out of your windows or from a, on top or from a guard tower, then what you want is a killing field, okay? About 100 yards minimum of open area with nothing in it, lit, well lit at night, maybe some kind of a motion sensors or something of that nature. You can have dogs patrolling the area. There's lots of options, but you want that open area. From there, we're gonna get into barriers of entry. And barriers of entry are really just super important. What do I mean by barriers of entry? Well, what's gonna slow somebody from coming into, and then once they, if they do, God forbid, have a successful mission and kill you or rob you, it's what's gonna prevent them from leaving quickly. So what's gonna slow them down? Well, we've got heavy duty bars on the windows. That's one way. We've got a, a wall, the higher the wall, the stronger the wall, the more it's got pointy things on top or barbed wire or razor wire, if it's got an electric, electric current on top. We've got signs that say, beware of electric high voltage fence, whatever. Those are all issues that we're talking about that are really gonna help. We, the first thing we wanna look at is slowing down that uh, attack, okay? We want barriers of entry and we want to be able to recognize. So we've got a lot of principles here. We've got the principle of recognition, target recognition, of being able to recognize when somebody is on your property. So warning systems. We've got idea of barriers of entry. It could be a river with alligators, could be a moat, could be a fence, could be all kinds of things. Caltrops, like we had, uh, looking at oh, back to World War II, beach invasions, we had these structures built on the beaches to slow down and make the beaches a million times more difficult to invade. That's all the kind of stuff that you need to look into. We wanna have controlled access to the keys and to whether it's a key that you have, don't give your key out, okay? If it's a code, have a code specifically for your help that you get an alarm or something when the help comes in and the help, the, the, the butler, the cleaning guy, whatever, the pool guy, when they come in, they have limited access or somebody of confidence has to be there while they come in, things of that nature. Use keys that are difficult to copy. Have a key code, but don't give out your key code. Make sure you're there to open the door for people when they come in. The more restrictive you can get with giving out access, the more that that access will butterfly because it's almost always a friend of a friend that ends up doing a robbery, for example, or somebody that saw your Instagram status with all your stacks of cash, okay, or your Rolex Watts collection, and now they're, they're casing your, your house and trying to figure out how to get in. Something we utilize down here a lot is also items that are kind of hidden in plain sight could be bulletproof windows, bulletproof glass on your vehicle, bulletproof glass on your house. There's even a bulletproof tint that you can apply to your windows these days that that's, you can apply yourself, it's pretty easy to apply. My house in Florida, we've got bulletproof sliding down shutters. I can hit a button and the house will become bulletproof, but then during the day, I've got the windows, regular glass windows and, and a beautiful view of the water, for example. So those are, those are things that you, that you can consider and definitely something else to think about. Also something else that we use down here is a double gate system. So you've got two gates. When a car, uh, the first gate has to open and the car pulls into the gate and then it shuts off, shuts behind them before this gate opens. So now the outside world has a barrier of entry to get in. You're dealing with this one person. You've got guard towers here on the four corners or at least one of the corners and you're assessing that person. You've got another guard that goes down and checks if that person's okay, if they're who they th say they are, if they're who they think they are. Then if that person's verified, then that second gate opens and the person's allowed into the compound. So that's something that I'm a huge fan of. I basically implement that on all of my properties that I manage if possible or any, any time that I'm giving consulting, I, I tell people to do that. It's something we're about to implement here. Actually, we've kind of implemented it in a very brief way, but we're gonna continue to, to upgrade the security. We do have a two gate system here and we're just gonna keep beefing that up. The next topic that we discussed already, uh, touch briefly on is deterrence. You want to make your place a hard target. You don't, you want people to look at your house and think, ah, I'm going to go rob the neighbors. I'm going to go rob the neighbors because they've got mean looking dogs. They've got warning signs everywhere. They are, if you're living out in the country, they're shooting guns all the time. They are, they've, it's got a, you know, who's going to rob the, the guy with the, with the training facility in his backyard. So we've got all of these, um, considerations and you know, if you're a guy like me, you don't mind making the place ugly. Maybe you've got to deal with your wife or girlfriend who's telling you, well, the place has to look good too and this and that. Okay, well, then you got a, a whole nother level of difficulty to deal with, but make the place ugly. Who wants to rob a, an ugly place?
So deterrence is kind of a really big thing that we need to consider. Animals, barbed wire, razor wire, alarms, motion detectors. We can even get into booby traps and stuff like that. But like I said, don't be flashy. Don't show off all your stuff on Instagram. Don't show all your cards. Don't act like you're a rich guy if you don't have the power or the ability to protect all that stuff, okay? So that's something to consider. If you're not a flashy person, it's a lot less likely that somebody's gonna wanna rob you. One of the most important things in my opinion is vigilance. So we'll touch a little bit more on vigilance in a second, but monitoring and surveillance kind of go hand in hand with vigilance. So what are some different ways that you can monitor your property? Comment below if you know some different ways that you can monitor your property and I'm gonna show you one way while I'm showing you an inside view of the house. So directly in line with monitoring and surveillance, we have got this camera that was sent to me by Rio Link Go. Okay, it's the outdoor security camera, Rio Link Go PT. It's supposed to be solar and all kinds of stuff like that. I have not had time to open this yet, but I'm gonna open it right now. I'm gonna show you guys. We, the reason that I'm opening this camera at this point is because we're discussing cameras. Now cameras, what you really need as far as monitoring goes. I want to give a disclaimer that this was sent to me for free. They're not paying for any kind of advertising or anything. I have no affiliation with them. When it comes to cameras, this is very important that you guys pick this up. When it comes to cameras, people will try to charge you a crap ton of money to install cameras in your house. You can do it all yourself for very cheap. I, wanna, I definitely wanna say that. This is a solar paneled camera, okay? It's got, uh, it's got all this stuff that comes with it, solar, solar panel, and it's completely you know, set up to be used on the go. It's a little dome camera, all right? It, it's got an antenna on there. It's a little dome camera here. I'll show you the dome camera. I'm not gonna do a whole lot of super detail on this. I'll do a separate video. This is kind of just the unboxing. Here it is. It's a, it's a little dome camera, 3D dome camera. All right. What's really important to know is that cameras are not the only option for monitoring, but they're a very important item as far as monitoring goes. All right. You want to have the option to have dogs are a great option. Guards are a great option. Okay. You can put booby traps around your house, <laughs> which, you know, definitely check the legality of that, but they can just be sound monitoring. They sell 209 primer booby traps that just make a loud bang with a string. All right, you can go up from there to whatever level you wanna to go to, obviously. There's all the way up to drones, okay? I was discussing not too long ago uh, the security needs of a, of a friend of mine who owns an island, okay? And he has his own fresh water source on the island and he's selling lots on the island and the lots are uh, extremely expensive. Seven figures just for each lot, but he's, He's uh, looking at doing it's kind of like a doomsday for the, for the super rich. And he is, well, it's pretty, it's pretty much set up. It's ready to go. But he was consulting with me about how to have automated security, what automated security needs. And we were discussing some drones, some actual security drones. And we were talking with some manufacturers from, uh, from uh, overseas that, that actually make some security drones that are fully automated and even have the ability to arm these drones if necessary. So, so there, there's all kinds of technology out there. If you guys have the money, there's really no limit to monitoring and surveillance. Again, if you don't have a bunch of money, you can train a, a stray dog and they'll be amazing, okay? If you, if you put in the time and the effort. So there's a lot of stuff um, that, you can, that you can see. I know a, 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 a good friend and an ambassador, a, a brand ambassador, the, for the brand is constantly making a lot of cool content. Check out Nomadic Slovak on Instagram. He's got uh, uh, some really cool dogs that he trains and stuff like that. He'd be somebody great to talk to if you wanna look into, into the dog training. Going into that, one of the absolute most important things about home defense is having a plan. Okay, you need to have a plan. If you live by yourself, have a plan. What we actually, from a psychological standpoint and the way that the human mind works, what we actually practice and what we run through in our daydreams, a lot of times if we, if we practice it enough, it becomes very similar 
to practicing it in real life. So visualizing, it's called visualization, can actually help a lot. So if you have a plan and if you visualized it, that's step one, and then actually physically doing it, especially if you have a family, if you have small kids, stuff like that, it's very important that you discuss with your family things to do. Some things I do wanna tell you automatically that you don't wanna do is you, you don't want to go trying to room clear your house. You do want to fortify your house. You do wanna build a safe room. You do wanna build hidden furniture. Every piece of furniture in your house can be, have hidden compartments. You can have hidden areas if you have kids. Your kids can immediately, if something happens, you have some sort of an alarm, code word, something like that. The kids know that they immediately go, if it's not a fire alarm, for example, you've gotta have a fire plan, you've gotta have a plan for this, plan for that, everything. Have this discussion with your family. Print, some, print out some, some cards, label them, and, and talk about this kind of stuff with your family. Discuss with them what happens, what am I gonna do? If it's not, if it's just you, have your plan. If somebody's breaking in, what do you do? Well, the kids need to have a safe place to go. Okay, you need to have a, a very serious consider, consideration of whether you're gonna call 911 or not. I personally would never uh, call 911 or recommend calling 911, but that completely depends on you. I personally believe that any kind of a situation that I'm gonna deal with if somebody is coming to my house, invading, any kind of stuff like that, trying to do me harm, the fact of the matter, the simple fact of the matter is the police are going to arrive after the damage is done and they're going to look for somebody to arrest. So if I survive the fight, then I'm going to be the one that gets arrested or they're, at the very least, I'm going to be the one that they are trying to arrest. And nowadays, our constitutional rights are not respected, okay? And although we many times believe we have castle law, we have the right to defend ourselves, all these things. Coming from a guy who has been arrested and done time simply for defending myself in a situation that I would not be alive to talk about had I not defended myself, I went and did time for that. So guys, please be very wary of the current police state that we live in in the United States. Police are not your friend, they're not here to help you. They have a quota of arrests to make, they're trying to make money, they want to do, they want to enforce the unconstitutional laws is what they're doing. And, and the proof is in the pudding. It's not my opinion. It's simple fact, okay? So take that into consideration. If you do call the police, then you may want to reconsider whether you're actually gonna defend yourself or not because what's gonna happen when the police get there, they're gonna take your gun from you. They're gonna try and find some way that your gun was illegal. They're gonna try and tell you that his foot fell outside the door, so now you're going to jail. And if not, and the police get there and everything was legal and they can't arrest you, then the family of the person you killed or shot or injured that broke into your house is gonna sue you for everything you have, okay? So be very careful about your plan and how it involves outside help. We're, you're not in the military, I'm not in the military, we don't have a QRF force, we don't have anybody that we can call, but you can have neighbors, you can form a plan, okay? You can, you can form your own strong community where I don't call 911, but I have a list of numbers that if, I'm gonna, if I've got a wife, my wife is dialing these numbers of these buddies that are gonna grab their firearms and come help me if something, if you know, SHTF, it's an option guys. I'm not recommending, I'm throwing it out there, okay? I'm not recommending anything. I'm giving you guys options and ideas and I'm sharing truth, okay? So that's all we're doing here. Now thinking about your house being assaulted, if it is a person that's assaulting your house, you're gonna want that area to shoot from. You don't wanna go around room clearing because you want to have the advantage. You give yourself the advantage. The way to do that is to have an armored area of your house that you know is bulletproof, a little small area that you can shoot from. It could literally just be this. What do I do? I fill this with concrete, make it three feet thick, and put a little hole right here. Oh, that hole looks cute. What is it? Oh, it's, it's modern art design. It's modern art, okay? I have a small hole that my shotgun fits out of in my, in my kitchen there. And where do I go when, when somebody breaks into my house? I go into my kitchen, I stick my shotgun through the hole, and I sit there and wait. Okay, so having a plan is so much more important than having any kind of a Rambo sense. We don't wanna go Rambo with all this kind of stuff, okay? We definitely don't wanna try and go crazy or over the top. It's also important to think about weapons, whether they're automated or manual. You can have, even in your, in your house, you can have built in some sort of a weapon. You can have caltrops, like we discussed earlier. You can have a weaponized, you know, there's all kinds of things that you can, that you can do that are automated weapons as well. You can have different things in your house that are set to trigger things. You can, if, if a bump go, something goes bump in the night, you can set off your car alarm and that'll be a signal to create distraction. Hey, we all have got to have a plan and there's, there's always a way to do things. And, and home hardening doesn't necessarily have to be 
the structure of the home itself. In this case, it's planning, preparedness, and mindset. So along those lines is what is your threat level like we talked about earlier? Do you need a, a bulletproof vest? Do you need a, a plate carrier? Do you need a, a chest rig, something like that? Well, if it's really easy to have you know, on a plate carrier uh, a stand, plate carrier stand right next to your bed, that you can just pull it out and throw it on if something goes bump in the night, maybe. Maybe it's a good idea for you. If you have experience with it, okay, maybe it's something that you want. So I can just pull this out, throw this on, and now I'm, I'm, I'm more protected, and then I go to my, my safe area. All right, so there's, there's chemical gas, okay? You could have, I'll give you a real cool story. Um, we, were, we were working uh, in Honduras during the takeover of when the pr current president tried to change the constitution and all this stuff. There's revolts everywhere. In one area called El Progreso, the gangs basically took over the entire city and they even attacked and, and tied up the police, killed a couple police and tied up the police and stole all of their equipment. Well, it just so happened that we had a compound there where the criminals that stole the, 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 the riot control stuff from the police started shooting the tear gas into our compound. They started shooting tear gas and OC gas and stuff like that into our compound. Well, we had very heavy security, armed guards and guard towers at that particular compound at this time. And, but what we didn't have for everybody was chem suits or, or gas masks. Not for everybody, a few of us had gas masks. Well, one of the guards was up in the guard tower and the, the guard tower got hit and he couldn't see anything. He couldn't, he couldn't, you know, it was, he was getting tear gassed. All right. Well, that's a big deal because now they're trying to breach the compound and the guard in the guard tower that's supposed to be shooting at them. These guys that are shooting at us with whatever they have guns and, and tear gas and stuff like that. Now this guard can't see anything. Well, this guy forever for the rest of my life, I'll remember this moment runs down to the pool and happens to find some little kids, pink, um, pink speedo goggles, swim goggles, and he puts these goggles on, these little, these little, and runs back up to the, to, to his, you know, sweat and, and all, eyes running down his face, stuff everywhere, grabs his shotgun and just starts pumping rounds down with these, with these little pink goggles on, uh, just, you know, textbook amazing uh, life story there. But, but that's a real great example of, we all saw that they were, that they were gonna start doing this. We saw them launching the stuff around. We knew that they robbed the police. We knew that the, the criminals now had tear gas. We had time to put chem suits on. We had time to put gas masks on, but we didn't have enough gas masks for everybody. So that's a great example. Maybe if, you're deal if, you, if you think you may have to deal with any kind of uh, unrest that's at that level of unrest, you should have a gas mask or a fire blanket. What if, you're, what if your house catches on fire? What's your fire plan? Do you have a fire blanket? You can wear a gas mask and a fire too. There's, there's fire blankets that you can drape around you that will protect you from the fire. How many people know that since smoke rises, you're supposed to crawl on all fours when, you're, when, it's, when there's smoke in your house to get out of the house, okay? All things to plan to talk about. Talk to your kids. Make sure you tell your kids that, that it's more not their baseball card collection or the family dog is not more important than their lives. That they need to, if there's a fire, they gotta get out of the house. So that leads up to the point of us talking about a bug out plan. If your compound gets breached and you see everybody around you dying and you're one of the last few people there, at what point, it's obviously it's a final option, but at what point do you bug out? Bug out, do you get, how do you get out and do you have a bug out plan? Do you have an escape route that we talked about barriers of entry? The last thing you want to have happen to you is that you get trapped in your own compound and killed. So you want to have the ability to very quickly get out of your compound but that's gotta be something that's built in. You've gotta have a built-in way of escape that only you know about, that's not, that the criminals don't know about, that they can't come in, do a quick hit and run assault because everybody wants to do a quick hit and run assault. It was like those guys just happened to be in passing. Well, now we have tear gas. We can start lobbying tear gas over, these, the, over this compound where we know these guys have you know money, wealthy, all this kind of stuff, lots of guns. And so it was a hit and run opportunity. They, they, they did it, moved in quickly. Well, we can't control, it's, this is in the middle of the city, so we can't control the city blocks. I can't put a killing field on a public road. So we had the bar barriers of, of, the most barriers that we could have, barriers of entry that we could have, but that was, that was a situation where we really needed more chem suits or 
gas mask protection for everybody. Okay guys, real quick tip for you. Pretty much every house in the United States has some kind of door hinge, something like this. And what they almost always come with is this little screw here. Okay, the little screw goes through the hole and this is what is on the inside section of your door here. It's basically holding, these little screws are holding your door in, okay? They're holding your door together. Real quick tip, and something you can do super cheap and almost anybody can do, is remove this little screw, okay? And go get a big screw that fits in the hole and swap it out, okay? That's a huge difference right there of what is actually going to keep your door from getting kicked in. So that's just a real quick tip, talking about basically barriers to entry. And there's kits that, that are sold that are made for making your doors really strong, okay? And there's all kinds of door seals and door jams, better door jams. And it's really a good idea because the, the windows and the doors are access and entry points, obviously. So if you're gonna fortify your windows, make sure you fortify your doors as well. So the final thing I wanna really discuss today, guys, is maintenance and upkeep, as well as, like I said, one of the most important things of vigilance and a real kind of bone tactical principle, as you guys know, is vigilance. You know, don't let your house get to the B looking like this. Don't let it get to the point where it's just fully let down, all right? But also, maintenance and upkeep could signify you know, keeping the hedges trimmed so you can see out your window and see if somebody's been coming in your yard, if somebody's peeking around, if you've got a peeping Tom or something like that. Keep things neat, keep things organized. You'll know, you're much more likely to know if somebody's been in your yard. You're much more likely to have a good field of view if, you know, if the grass is clean and cut, nobody can be hiding in, in shrubs and bushes all around your house. Stuff, you know, really simple stuff, but stuff that a lot of guys overlook. And finally is, is just really the principle of vigilance. And this is kind of a, such a resounding theme with Bone Tactical that the most important thing you can do is just have awareness. Be aware of what's going on around you at all times. Be aware of your surroundings. Be aware of you know keep changing your routine and keeping an eye on if anybody's following you. And everything that you do, just be aware. Be aware and, and keep an open mind. Keep learning. You guys are watching this video to learn. So we've learned today that you may need to fortify your windows. Your windows are probably really easy to get into. You may need to add a thorn bush outside of your window instead of a different kind of bush. You may need to, to put bigger bolts in your door if you haven't put bigger screws in your door. There's a lot of stuff that you can do. Keep learning and keep fortifying. Improve a little bit at a time, but keep getting better. You may need to put bars on your windows, okay? All of these things. Maybe you're not gonna put you know, a moat around your house with alligators in it, but maybe, maybe you're gonna get a dog, and a dog is a huge help. A dog is a big threat and theft deterrent, okay? So we've discussed all these things. We've kind of really touched very briefly on all the topics, but furthermore, this is all stuff that you guys are gonna have to keep doing research, and that's, that's kind of the mentality aspect of it and the vigilance aspect of it is keeping with it, keeping at it. It's a mindset. It's not a, a one day I do this stuff to my house and it's over. It's every day getting better, keeping an open mind to learning and knowledge and, and really being a stronger community and helping those around us. If a lot of us continue to take on the, the character qualities of being st the strength and pillars in our community and being strong men and, and supporting those that are weaker, then we're not even going to have to have these huge walls and really strong doors. We can, we can afford to start investing in building a bigger table. And I'm inviting you guys to keep here, sitting with me at my table and eating with me and sharing this knowledge. So let's keep eating. I appreciate your, your tuning in. I appreciate your support. And I really appreciate if you would comment below and give me some feedback. That's, what, that's how I can keep these videos coming. I can keep devoting the time and energy and effort into this by you guys sharing, subscribing to the channel, sharing this video. This is free. You guys are getting this completely free. Okay, it's all free. So I only ask that you comment anything you want to comment below, whether it's hate, okay, give it a like, whether it's hate or help or a recommendation or your disagreement, share this with a friend and subscribe to the channel. That way that we can keep growing and, and keep making the world a better place. Thanks for watching. Bone out.